What's up, Connor High? Welcome to Real Talk, KTIG's new show, talk show. Today we will have three special guests from Culinary here to talk to us a little bit about what it's like to be in Culinary and to cook. So stay tuned for today's edition of Real Talk. Once again, today we would like to welcome our special guest panel. Let's start with our first welcoming, Chef Laux. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do here at CHS. Well, I started culinary arts many a years ago, working in hotels, country clubs, restaurants through Woodlands, Houston. Uh, graduated from the University of Houston with a hotel restaurant management degree and uh, came to Conroe High School last year, looking to make a difference in the area. All right, Sonny. We'd like to welcome you too. Tell us a little bit about you. Hey guys, my name is Sonny. I've been in culinary for about three years now. We went to some culinary competitions. This year I think I'm going to do really good. Last but not least, we have Cage. Uh, my name is Cage Whitmire. I've been in culinary for about three years. I'm not really into the competitions or anything, but I'm just here to, you know, make sure I can live on my own one day and cook for myself. So now that you know who's here, let's start out with this. Uh, when did you discover your passion for cooking? Let's start off with Chef. So when I was a young boy, I would go to my grandmother's house and I'd watch her cook nonstop. She'd spend the whole day in the kitchen making meals for the family. And, and I would stay right by her and um, watch her cook and watch her clean up. Just the amazing magic that she could work on the stove was just caught my interest. I would say I was maybe five or six. Starting off young. Yeah. How about you, Cage? Uh, chef is really just showing me what cooking's all about and stuff. You know, you watch your parents cook growing up, don't think anything about it. But he's kind of showed me the more depths into it and the intricate, like, uh, details to it and how cool and, you know, artistic it can actually be. How about you, Sonny? I found my passion to my mom. She was, she was always telling me I'm not gonna grow up and not know how to do anything for myself. So when I was doing it, she was like, oh, you gotta learn how to cook. So as soon as I can remember, she always had me in the kitchen helping her cook ever since, like, I don't even know how long, since I was little. She had me cooking. I remember cooking eggs like when I was like four, not, probably not four, like five or six. <laughs> and they're cooking, you know. All right, Young. Cage, let's start with this question. What is your favorite part about being in the kitchen? Being in the kitchen, just like the family <laughs> atmosphere we have in there. It's always a good time. Um, there's never, you know, if you're having a bad day, you know, you can look forward to culinary. It's always laughs and uh, just a, a really good time in the kitchen for sure. How about you, Sonny? I just, yeah, I love the atmosphere too. Like everybody's like family in there. Like you go in there, you have a good time. Everybody tries each other's foods. It's like, oh, this is good, this is good. And then like you compliment each other, like, oh, I like this and that. And then everyone knows each other. How about you, Chef? What's your, what's your favorite right I, part? For me, it's, it's the light bulb moment for the students. When, when we've talked about something and we've looked at PowerPoints and, and these, these students here have, seen the same thing for maybe three years in a row and it's finally that moment when they're in the kitchen and they're putting something together and they're like oh wow I get it now and that's my favorite part hands down watching the kids really just understand it all right so now we'll continue with this what's your favorite dish to make barbecue barbecue anything barbecue <laughs> smoked meats if I can cook it on a barbecue pit that's my favorite how about you cage um, anything that's not sweets. We did sweets all last year, and so anything that's not sweets. I like making pastas, like lasagnas, spaghettis, raviolis. All right, thank you so much, guys, for sharing. Next up, we'll talk about the hardest part of being in culinary right after this. Um, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Are you a student here? Yeah, I've yeah, been here. I'm actually going to class right now. Okay, I was just a bit confused because I didn't see your ID out. Oh, uh, that's me. Yeah. My bad, it was just in my pocket for the entire time. If you just wear your ID here all day, then you'll be fine. Oh, okay. Thank you, man. You have, have a great day. day. You too, man.
Welcome back, guys. Now we want to shift a little and talk about what is the hardest part of cooking? Well, in my opinion, I believe it's the consistency, like getting it right every time. Because you can't have one amazing dish and then come with another, like, bad dish. Like, it has to be the spot on every time. That's what I think is the hardest thing, is just getting it right. Chef? Um, for me, starting out in culinary, I think getting the flavor profiles correct. Every cuisine, every region of the world has a different flavor profile. And matching that flavor profile up with the outcome of the dish was the most difficult thing. How about you, Cage? Uh, probably the hardest part is when you're having to cook something that's over a couple of days of prep and having the motivation to come in every day and keep building off of that one thing and not being able to eat it every, you know what I'm saying? That's probably the hardest part. All right, Cage. So we'll continue with you. What is the hardest dish you ever made and how did it come out? The hardest dish I've ever made? Um, that's hard. Um, probably some of the pastas we've made. Some of the pastas we've made um, and the, the, the sauces that go in with them get very confusing. And I've, I've messed up a lot of times on pasta and sauces. So why is it hard? Um, you have to be so detailed with it. And you have to get every single thing right. And if it's not, it'll taste completely different than what it's supposed to. And it'll throw everything off. How about you, Sonny? Shoot, I'm about to say the pastas too. Because, like, man, there's so many ways that you can get it wrong. Like, like, if you mess up one thing, it'll come out, like, nasty. And then, like, if you do something wrong, like, the power will, like, start bubbling up. It's just, it's just bad it's situation. Bad. It's, it's bad. a bad situation. It's, it's really bad. messy. And I don't know, man. Like, that's probably, like, one of the hardest. Like, getting, getting it right every time. Yeah. Right. How about you, Chef? <laughs> Personally, the hardest thing for me to do is decorate cakes. <laughs> oh, my God. God. Decorate cakes. I, I, I can't do it. I mean, I can show it's the students <coughs> how to do it, but when I do it, it looks like, you know, I hate to compare a kindergartner's coloring paper, <laughs> but that's what it looks like for me on a it's, cake. It's it looks so hard. It's so bad. It's so bad. Literally, like, you got to be, like, <laughs> <laughs> so steady with it and everything. Like, you got to have a steady hand to be decorating yeah. cakes, man. Yeah, you do, you do. I give them, I tip of my hat. <laughs> yeah, to anybody who can do it. To everyone that can do it perfectly, I tip of my hat. <laughs> tip of my hat. So what is the hardest part of culinary class? Uh, let's start off with Cage. The hardest part of culinary class? It, I mean, it's really not a hard class or a more uh, much of a demanding class. Just, you know, he's not going to judge you if you make something terrible. Just try. All you got to do is try. Put effort into the class and... Your grade will show whatever effort you put into it. It's not a very hard one. How about you, Sonny? I'm thinking the same way that Cage is thinking. Like, Chef's always going to push you in the right direction, and he'll never be like, oh, this is bad, and he'll never make it hard on you. Like, he'll just be like, he'll help you with what you need to know and get you pointed where you want to go. So, Chef, you said you, were t you took culinary classes, mm -hmm. right, too? So mm -hmm. what was the hardest part for you during that time? Um... <laughs> Baking and pastries. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not good at it. Uh, I think really more than anything is trying to remember like the sanitation and the safety things, that like the good. temperatures of food. You know, you got to cook a, a chicken breast to 165 degrees yeah. or it's undercooked and you have the, the risk of spreading pathogens like bacteria and viruses to other people just through the food. And so I think that's a huge one, really hard to remember all that. For that sure. is a huge sure. one. Like, For you got to sure. make sure everything's on point. You can't have any, like, anything on, like, you can't have no, like, bacteria on the same thing. You got to wipe everything, clean everything, make sure everything's clean before you do it. It's, it's super detailed. Super, super detailed. detailed. If you ever think, like, like, that's probably, like, the most detailed thing there is in cooking. Yeah. And you got to remember it every step by time. step. Every, every time. time. All right. Now let's take a look what's going here at CHS. Attention juniors, on March 3rd, our campus will be offering SAT testing for juniors only. This SAT will not include the essay portion of the test. Please research ahead of time to find out if the college you plan to attend requires the essay portion. If so, you will need to take the SAT with an essay at another time. Registration is November 30th through December 11th at noon. Space is limited and the best part is the cost of the test is free. If this will be your first time taking the SAT to register, look for the SAT flyers around the school.
Attention National English Honor Society members. The NEHS Christmas Party will be on Friday, December the 11th from 3 to 5 p.m. in rooms 258 and 259. We hope to see you all there. We wanted to say congrats to this week's Teacher of the Week, Mrs. Gillian Davis, a math teacher here at CHS. She was nominated by Caitlin Galica. Make sure to go to KTIGnews.com and click the Nominate Here button to nominate your favorite teacher. Rescue the reindeer, save the snowman. Attention teachers, we have lost our student council reindeer and snowman and are offering a reward for them to be found. If you find the reindeer or snowman in your room, bring it to room 1027 and claim your reward. The paw print will be selling candy cane grams for $1 on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays through December 11th. They will also have holiday goodie bags for $5 along with new crew necks, long sleeve tees, and a special Connor High Christmas shirt. Stop by during your lunch on white days to get your merch before it's sold out. This week's College of the Week is Texas A&M Engineering Academies. The A&M Engineering Academy program is the first engineering transition program of its kind in the U.S. Unlike traditional transfer programs, students admitted into the Engineering Academies are A&M College of Engineering students from day one. Students are co-enrolled between Texas A&M and one of their partner community colleges, taking their mathematics, science, and core curriculum classes through the community college while taking engineering courses from Texas A&M faculty on the co community college campus. After one or two years, students transition to Texas A&M to complete their bachelor's degree. The community colleges that are partnered with Texas A&M include Blinn College, Houston Community College, and Austin Community College, just to name a few. This is a great opportunity for students wanting to pr pursue engineering but may not be admitted directly into an engineering program. To close out today's show, we wanted to talk about the future. Uh, what are your plans for the future? Uh, for me, I'll probably end up going to a two-year college, getting a process operating degree, and doing something with uh, vinyl and records. But of course, I'll always have some sort of cooking and culinary in my life, 100%. How about you? For me, I want to go to college and get my business degree, and sometime in the future, plan on opening up my own restaurant. Nice. And Chef, what are your plans or for the future here at CHS? Well, I want to grow and develop a culinary program that the community knows about. I want local restaurants, businesses um, to, to come to us and say, hey, we, we're looking for some students. We need some good quality students to come and work at our place. Or we want local banks to come in and, and share our bistro with us. Um, if they have a meeting, they can come in and the students can cook some food and, and uh, put it out for them for lunch. Instead of going in, uh, to a hotel or something, I want them coming to us for that. So how would you take what you learned forward? From culinary? Uh, oh, I, I, I'll take it on for the rest of my life and pass it down to my kids and their kids and theirs. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's cooking and we're making our own, own uh, traditions here every single day. Yeah, it's something, it's something that kind of stays with you through your whole life because it's, it's like your own form of like tradition. Like you're learning how to cook. Like it's stuff that you, you're making like by yourself. And Chef like, puts it in there like where you make it and like, you just know what to do. Exactly. All right, Chef, what do you plan to make culinary better in the future? Well, we started last year um, purchasing up a, some equipment to open up a coffee shop on campus. And with COVID-19, we kind of put the stop to that. But I, looking into the future, we're going to have a nice uh, bistro coffee shop where students can come. They can hang out in the morning times. They can buy a cup of coffee, maybe a pastry that was made by the students and uh, hang out and have a good time in the morning. And then looking forward, you know, just continuing to push the students to grow and develop their personal skills in culinary. All right. So what would y'all say to someone that's interested in joining culinary? I say, man, you just go for it. It's so much fun. Like I've had so much fun in the last three years that I've been doing it. Like it's just, just go for it. Yeah, I say that with anything around Connor High. There's so, th th it's so diverse here. There's so much things you can jump into head first. I say go for it, a thousand percent Yeah, go for and it. Chef will be open arms, happy to take you in. Might as well do it while you. you're in high school. Might as well do it. All right, what's, that's all the time we have for Real Talk. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. 
for talking about culinary. And viewers, thank you so much for reviewing. Make sure to stay tuned to KTIG's YouTube channel for another episode of Real Talk coming soon. And don't forget, CHS, be the reason someone smiles today.